tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we approach the throne of grace, we come to you humbly in ourselves and need thy mighty hand. Here tonight, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as I get out of the way, that you may have your way here today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love. I thank you because besides thee, there is no other to worship in spirit and in truth. We might have all technical difficulties, anything that's trying to hinder the word of God from going forth. And Father, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Pray to people's heart to see thy word in spirit and in truth. Thank you for answering prayers on the request of those above salvation. Go forth that the kingdom of God may grow. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. We take authority over the prince of the air. And right now, Lord, and I thank you. I thank you for clarity upon the word of God. I thank you for leading God and direct and ordaining our footsteps here this night and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. If you have your Bible, I'd like to open up to the book of the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 20. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 20. But the word reads, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. 2 Peter 1, verse 4, Wherefore, excuse me, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This is the word of God for the people of God. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and to the doers of his holy word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, just for the next few minutes I want to talk about God's promises has no expiration date. God's promises have no expiration date. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the use of the Internet, we are able to teach and preach on a local level and be able to reach on a global level. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, God's promises have no expiration date. Hallelujah. Because every promise of God has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus, which means that we as God's children have access to every promise of God for our everyday lives in 2024. You see, child of God, whatever situation you are going through right now, You should focus on God and on the promises of God. No matter what your situation looks like, it is so important for you as a child of God to find a scripture that relates to your situation or circumstances in the word of God and stand on that promise. The Bible says here in the book of Numbers 23, Verse 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said and shall he not do it, or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Beloved, God is faithful to all of his promises. Yes, the prom- promise means a binding declaration of something to be done or given for another benefit. I'm going to say that again. When you talk about a promise, it refers to a binding declaration of something to be done or given for another behalf. 
or benefit. You see, God's promises never expire because it has no expiration date. Expire means to come to an end or to be terminated, no longer to be valid after a period of time. You see, people of God, never be moved by what people think or say only. Be moved only by what God directs you to accomplish. Believe in Christ. Do not be moved by your circumstances or the appearance of life. Only be moved by what thus says the word of God in 2024. You see, child of God, never allow fear to creep in on what God on what God says that you can overcome. So the Bible says here in 2 Timothy 1 and 9, for God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Yet God promises has no expiration date. When we look at the book of Psalms, 119, verse 160, the word says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgment endures forever. Believe in Christ. When God makes a promise, and when he establishes a covenant, he keeps it. See, God is not like man or the son of man, and he should repent. If he said it, if he spoke it, he shall bring it to pass. Well, I'll remind it in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God's promises has no expiration date. The Bible says, here in Isaiah 41, verse 10, say, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am the God, thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Beloved, our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, he promised to get us through whatever we are facing, even now in 2024. See, God promised, according to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 2, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, Thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame scorch thee. These promises that God gives, he are able, ready, and willing to back up everything he say and do. Yes, beloved, God keeps his promises. And the promise God made to Abraham does not have a shelf life. It is still good in 2024 because God will keep his promises to Israel. God also will keep his promises to us in 2024. You see, my brothers and sisters in Christ, God keeps his promises no matter what because God's promises are trustworthy. Yes, beloved, God is faithful, and he is full of integrity, so we can count on his everlasting word that he says, what God says that he will do, that he will do, and and he is able to bring it to pass in our lives. So believe in Christ. In a world of broken promises, 
even now in 2024. We can count on the God of the universe, the God that sits high and look low, the one that knows all by name, the very hairs on our head. We can count on our God to be faithful to what he's promised. Yes, child of God, are you spiritually prepared to receive God's promises? You see, God honors those who honors him. Beloved, God is looking for something for surrendered hearts and for those who are quick to confess sin in 2023. You see, when you have a surrendered heart to God, you'll allow him to come in, clean you up, turn you around, put your foot on solid ground. Yes, preparation is key because preparation minimizes anxiety and preparation gener- generates peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. See, the process happens before the promise. Yes, beloved, one thing that you must know as a child of God is that God is a promise keeper. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Psalms 145, verse 13 says, Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endures throughout all generations. Yes, beloved, not only do we serve an everlasting God that has and will forever reign, but also a God that's always keeping his promises. Child of God, our God, always knew that people may fail us. Our God always knew that loved ones may depart, disappoint us and that our circumstances may change in ways that can be challenging to challenge our faith to believe that the promise would never come to pass. But I stop by to remind you of what the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 20. For all the promises of God in him, talking about Christ, are yea, and in Christ, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will, will endure forever and ever. So child of God, Our God is awesome. Our God has all power in his hand. Yes, believer in Christ, in order to hold on to God's promises, you must pray until something happens. To pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Luke 18, verse 1, because the verse says, Men are to always pray and don't faint or don't lose heart. In Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8, it says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks it, receive it. And he that seeketh, it, find it. And to him that knock it, it shall be opened. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, People of God, our prayer life is like fuel for us to use with the belief that God will show up for us. Bear to be repeated. People of God, our prayer life is like fuel for us to use with the with the belief that God will show up for us in each and every situation that we go through. So when God has spoken to us about his promises, it is not enough to just pray once. We must pray until something happens. And also we must create a vision of God's promises. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the God that we serve, he is an awesome God. He's a God that has everything in control. 
God's promises has no expiration date. So believe of Christ, we are called to write down things that we may receive, that we receive from the Lord. It is given to us in a way to remind us of God's faithfulness and also to help us wait on the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah 40 and 31, but they that wait on the Lord, he shall renew our strength. We shall mount up with wings as eagles. We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. So believe in Christ. Also, in order to hold on to God's promises, we have we must have accountability. Bible says here in Galatians six, verse one. Brethren, if a man be overtaken, caught up, caught up in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself that thou be tempted. So, beloved, as believers in Christ, we are called to have people around us and to help keep one another accountable in everything that we say and do, in prayer, accountable, in ministry work, accountable in our walk with Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. So do not be afraid to share the promises of God that you are believing for, believing God for, with someone else who you know that has your best interests in mind and that will team up with you to make sure that you hold on to them and will not settle for anything else. So, beloved, child of God, believe of Christ, let us go back to the Word of God on a consistent basis and trust the process which will bring the promises to our, to our lives. Remember, Again, what the word says in Second Corinthians 1 and 20, which says, for all the promises of God, in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. You see, the word process refers to a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. Yes, beloved, there are things that we need that needs to happen in our lives before we can step into what God has for us. Child of God, faith is what's, what's keeping you gone until you see God do what he has promised to do. Yes, beloved, if you settle in your mind that you will that you will go through a process that God will use to bring about his promises. It will strengthen your faith. And the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1 that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Also in 11, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please God. That them that come to God must believe that he is who he say he is. And he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. So we must seek him while he may be found. We must draw nigh to him as he draw nigh to us. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we are serving a good and mighty God. Remember, God's promises has no expiration date, and it never expires. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, God is teaching us to trust him and to be bold enough in our faith to go forth, believe in God, that he's able, ready, and willing to meet our each and every need. See, God is always growing. God, God is also growing you as, his, as a follower of his in your character. And he is also 
fine tuning the gifts. So, so put your trust in Him. The author and finisher of our faith. The Bible says in Proverbs three, verse five and six, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Don't thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. Again, we are reminded here in the Word of God in First Peter one verse sixteen. It says, "Because because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy." As a believer in Christ, add to your faith moral excellency, beloved. Because of our faith in Christ, we are His representatives towards others. To represent Christ, we must be like him. People of God, our moral and behavior matters to God. We can't come to him just any kind of way. We got to come to him decent and in order. Yes, beloved, our moral and our moral standards and behavior matters to God because they are supposed to be a testament of Christ saving work in us that which attracts others in a manner that some of them want to know God personally too. Yes, Christ is concerned about the sin that so easily besets you and weighs you, weighs you down. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the God that we serve he is awesome. The God that we serve, he's more than able, willing, and ready to meet our each and every need. Yes, we must be more like him. We must be more like Jesus in everything we say and do. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, be aware of that sin that so easily besets you. Be aware, child of God. Hallelujah, of what you must do in order to keep your walk with Christ alive and well. See, Christ is concerned about the sin that so easily entangles us and wears down. Says the child of God, once you have, once you are committed to moral excellency and on the knowledge, because you need to know Christ better, more and more each and every day. So, beloved, as we gain knowledge of Christ, we must also learn self-control or self-discipline. Yes, the Bible says in Proverbs 25, verse 28, he that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Yes, beloved, a city without walls invites thieves and those who wants to take advantage of weakness. Well, well, we are reminded of what the scripture says. In the what the scripture says in the eighth of the verse in John ten ten, it says the thief cometh not, but for to steal. And to, and to kill and to destroy. This is the eighth cause of the verse. Yes, child of God, without self control, you cannot, you cannot, without knowing, unwittingly, without knowing, give the devil access to wreak habit in your life, in your family, in your business, your church or even your ministry. Yes, beloved, God wants you as his child to have self-control so that he can protect the purpose of his promises to you in your life. So choose this day who you're going to serve. Choose God. Yes, beloved, add to your self-control patience. Endurance, because without self-control, 
as our defense wall in place. We are not we are ready. We are ready to stand firm in our faith as long as long as it, it as long as it takes and that and this requires patience and endurance. The Bible says also here in the book of Hebrews chapter ten verse thirty six says for ye have need of patience endurance that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promises. Yes, believer in Christ, patience, endurance, ensure that we will stand firm, that we will stand firm to our challenges, but still, that is not enough. We must add to that Godliness. The godliness is the heartbeat felt reverence for God and the things of God. You see, without without godliness or or vengeance or reference for for the for the Lord, it must be accomplished by genuine affection by our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to build one another up in the faith. We need to build one another up in the faith and to build together for the glory of God. See, only togetherness can we walk forward into the promises of God without stumbling. Yes, believer in Christ, as you wait for what God promised, promise you, remember, is for his purpose and not ours. He has full control of what's going on in our lives. So we must yield to the leadership of the Spirit of God. Let him have his way. Let him use you as many as mouth and peace. As mouth peace. Let him use you as we go about being as rain and peace. Our hallelujah. Because the God that we serve, he, he is God, and he's all, and he's God all by himself. So, beloved, again, we are reminded in Isaiah 41, verse 10, that the word says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through faith. Yes, God promises has no explanation date attached to it. God's promises are are great.